Welcome to the Fabulous Fitness and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Janetta. And I'm going to use the word exciting today because we do have an exciting show in store for you as we're going to interview two prominent authors. You stay tuned and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race, keep your own pace, keep moving and never stop. Just go, go, it go with what you got. Our guest today is Bobby Smith. She's known as the queen of Western romance writers, and she's also a New York Times bestseller. And then you guys don't hit the clicker yeah, right now. Don't I know the channel. <laughs> that's right. I know they're not too interested in romance, and uh, they're so good at changing the clicker. That's one of the things that they do best. Because we have something for you too. We also have Harry Spiller, who writes war books and forensic books and crime books, and so you'll be. We have something for both of you. So y'all. Just uh, sit put the tight. clicker down. Yeah, sit tight, sit tight. <laughs> well, Bobby, let's talk about your books first, and then we'll get to talking about Harris. How many books have you written now? Forty-six. Forty-six and books. I know it's amazing looking at them. You, know, you sit there and you wonder where they come from, and I have no clue. <laughs> wow. Uh, we we were talking off camera a while ago about how do you come up with the ideas, you know, and you keep developing them. I'm weird. Yeah. I think most writers know that. Whenever we have a writer's conference or anything, all of us get together and we're all weird. And it's just, you get vibes off of things. You have people talking in your head to you. Even when you were a little kid, this was going on. And people thought we were strange in grade school, too. <laughs> 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 and we were. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I, 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 I tell people, I, I've never been considered normal. Now, the problem that that was, my wife was normal until she met and married me. <laughs> <laughs> you were a good influence and on then her then. And then she changed, That's too. right. <laughs> yeah. But it's, I guess it's, it's, it's exciting writing books. We know that because now we've, she's written, you've written one novel but hadn't been published, right? And, but most of our books have been nonfiction. Right. Uh, that, that we've done, like mine is 60 true life stories of things that have happened to Santa Claus because I do Santa professionally. And awesome. are, these are all stories. But how do you develop story ideas? Um, out of history. I do historical romance, basically, and I'm doing also the faith-based contemporaries now. But with my historicals, I'm a history freak. Mm -hmm. And especially women's history. Over the last 10 years, I found out all the stuff they never taught us in school. I mean, there's so many women's stories that we never learned about because school was so concentrating on the big stuff that happened and not what the women were doing. And there were a lot of really cool women. There were 2,006 women way back, you know, 150 years ago. And so I, I really love digging through the history and getting inspired for ideas for the stories from that. Mm, okay. And Harry, your books have to do with military and forensics. Yes, yes. My first book uh, came out of my experiences uh, that I had during Vietnam and as a recruiter um, called Death Angel. And then I, <clears throat> I followed that up with a second book, um, going back to the area where I'd recruited and finding families and doing stories about them and what had happened. And um, continued with that, I've always had an interest in uh, military history. And to me, the people that actually fight the wars are the brothers and uncles and, the, you know, not all the generals uh, necessarily. So I did uh, three or four uh, personal account books on uh, guys in World War II, POWs, Pearl Harbor, uh, Korea. And then uh, I've also done a number of uh, true crime stories in uh, what used to be the official detective magazines, right. they, they're no longer in existence. And presently I'm writing a true crime, true crime series. I've got book one and two and book three will be out probably in the fall. And so these were things that actually happened? Yes, this is non-fiction. These are, these are true stories. Yeah. And most of, <coughs> excuse me, most of them in Southern Illinois? Well, How, a number in books. Southern Illinois, uh, Missouri, Kentucky. Uh, the, this pretty area, much, uh, anyway. This area, yeah, right. yes. Yeah, the Heartland, I guess, is the they Heartland. Call it. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. us. Yeah, that's why I said "Murder in the Heartland." <laughs> yeah, it's a title. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's always interesting. We um, t and I know that you talk about military. I'm from a military family, but I was of the age that I missed the military. I missed the wars. I guess which it was a blessing, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'll be I'm 68. I'll be 69 in June. So, but I have uh, a younger brother that spent uh, two terms in Vietnam. 
Uh, I have an uncle that was in the Second World War. I had great uncles that were all retired military. I mean, they just they just did the whole gamut. I have one that fought the Battle of the Bulge. Wow. He went in as a as a three striper and came out as a captain. I mean, the, with the battlefield promotions and everything that went with it. And there's a lot of a lot of history there, a lot of family history there also. And uh, so, and then we have a foster son who just retired last year, year before last, last year, year before last, from military. <laughs> <You're> before, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he graduated. He, he, he retired. Reti he was a naval intelligence officer. Oh, awesome. And uh, his desk, his life duty station was the Pentagon, and his desk was wiped out in 9-11, but oh. he wasn't there. He lost several friends. He was 10 minutes away from his desk when the plane flew in uh, to the Pentagon. And he was, he, he was one of the first men in Afghanistan chasing the Al-Qaeda. And he said, Dad, back then a, a bath was two bottles of water poured over my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, But when he retired, he retired at the Pentagon, and we were fortunate that I got to go and take part in his retirement service there in the Pentagon. He could write some good books. Yes. Oh, but then if, oh, he, told, but sure if, if he told us, then he'd have to shoot us. That's so right, we, right, yeah, right, we right, couldn't right, find right. out the ending. <laughs> I, that's what we used to talk about. He'd come visit or we'd talk, and he'd say, well, that's been on CNN, so I can talk about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, right, exactly. How, how did you both get started, I mean, writing? Are y'all ma journalism majors or...? Not me. Um, only one teacher in all my years of schooling told me I could write, and that was in fifth grade. Um, and I was, that's when I was making up stories about Bonanza and, and Mom hiding them in the headboard of the bed with the sliding headboards. Mom <laughs> saved them and gave them back to me. But um, I, knew, I knew young. I think writers know, you know that when we're young, they're playing with the Star Wars stuff now. They're playing with the little Roy Rogers ranch I had, you know, and you're making up stories all the time. But through school, I mean, I went two years to Harris Teachers College and then uh, switched over and went to UMSL and got a, a business degree and worked hard lines, which in the long run, I was first woman department manager and uh, assistant buyer in a hard lines department at Famous Bar at downtown. But it helped me with understand the book business. When I finally sold my first book in 1983, I understood the process of getting the books through the warehouse, getting them on the stands, making sure the covers are good so they sell. So mm -hmm. it was really a great background for me to have that kind of a background in terms of sales. Because books are all about, we got to get the people to pick the books up and buy that's them. That's right. That's why right. we have the handsome hunks on the covers of the book. Everybody will know that you're on the cover and Harry's on the cover of my <laughs> <Right>. new books. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of, Mark Hansen says, he says, you know, he said, writing the book is, uh, and getting it published is about 12%. Marketing is about 88%. 88, it is. <laughs> and getting the word out and letting people know that your books are there. Because yeah. everybody's so online right now that yep. books are falling by the wayside. And we've got to get kids back. There's nothing like curling up with a good book. Yeah. I, it's fun. I, I totally agree. Yes. And with, with, you know, with TV and the computer both. We've got a lot more competition than we had 20, 30 yes. years yeah. ago. Yes. Yeah, because you can download e-books, you know, just crazy now. Well, yeah, I was, uh, it was an article in our paper that the books on tape, mm -hmm. audio tapes, are very popular now because they can put them in their CD thing. Well, I was just and thinking, I don't have a tape player well, anymore. they got to start calling them yes. books, books, books on, on CD. Books on CD <laughs> is what they are, right. yeah. Yes. Uh, and really they are. But it's, it's phenomenal. Well, now... This is your new book, Defiant, right? Defiant right? is out this month. Yes, it's a April release. And, and, and if you notice, on my last two books, Half-Breed Warrior was my last one, there's no clinch and no girls because they realize a lot of guys are reading me because they like good westerns. Think, you know, Maureen O'Hara and John, and John Wayne. That's who I kind of like really pattern after that in Bonanza. And so um, the guys have really started reading me, and they're not a afraid to pick them up when I don't have you know, all the boobs hanging out on the cover. Then the yeah. guys will buy my books, and that's great. I, I was trying to think who was the famous Western writer for years and years. Louis Lamore. Louis Lamore. Oh yeah, right. Zane Gray. And Zane, I love Gray. Zane Gray too. I love yeah, my, now my dad Gray. used to read everything Zane Gray came out with. Yes, yeah. fantastic yeah. talents. Yeah. 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 And uh, so that, and and that's what's interesting though about like like you, you guys, you just you write and write and write. And, 40 something books. I'm sure that you have a, if this is not a bad word, a cult following on, we your, hope on your so. books. Yeah. You know. We hope so, you know, because I know I have authors that if the minute their book comes out, I don't know how soon I'll get to read it, but I buy it. You right. know, so I hope there are, my fans are out there. And the, the one thing somebody said one time, and it's so true, is that an author's applause is silent. Yep. And so until we find out from New York how the book sold, we know nothing. Right. The book goes out, we sit and wait, you hope in Schnooks and Deerbergs and Shop and Save that the book sold, you know, and if you see them there all week long and nobody's buying them, you have a heart attack. So it's, it's a tough business, and so it's, it's good to just lock yourself in your office and keep making up happy endings. That's fun for me. How did you get started, Harry? Well, um, <clears throat> I started, I always wanted to be a writer. 
But as far as the background, um, when I was in the seventh grade, I flunked English. When I was in the eighth grade, I flunked English. But they passed me with a D minus, you know, because that's what they used to do to right. move that, the herd. Is that why you write when your I books was in a, German? Yeah. When I, was <laughs> a, when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school, I was in a special English class, which meant the dummies. And uh, I really was. And then I got into a regular English class when I was a junior, and I made a C. And you didn't have to take it senior because I hated English, and so I didn't take it. And that's my background as far as, <laughs> <laughs> as far as my writing. And I always love to go. Marion High School has asked me to come to their honors class several times, and I always get that question when I do. All the kids are sitting there with their mouths dropped open, and the English teachers trying to get under the desk. You know, <laughs> it's 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 fun to do. But I, you know, uh, I've I've always had the interest in doing it. And um, I wrote an article one time whenever I was in the service and sent it to the Officers Magazine. Uh, the Marine Corps Gazette, and they published it. I was just elated. Thrilled. You oh. were thrilled, right? Oh, yeah, and uh, I was really thrilled. And then I, I was inspired by the experiences that I had uh, to try to write the first book, and I worked at it real hard. It took me five years to get it published, but I finally did get it published, and then after that I kind of got on a roll with it, and uh, I'm 11 books later now. Well, you know, show me a picture. Hold up the whole Oh, yeah. This, well, this is, this, is, this is the picture of me, everybody. I had this at the bookstore the other day, and this, this lady read the book, and it was laying down there, and she didn't know it was me. And I said, you do know that. I said, that's not you. And I said, look just like I did when I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> but I was 22 years old there. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's always been fascinating to write. It has been for me and, and for her. She's been writing for years. And uh, a few years ago, it was a question we'd both had. I didn't have my book anywhere near completed. And she, hers was in pretty good shape. And so I said, fine, we'll just put yours out. And, and that's what we did. We set up our own publishing company. Oh, and, awesome. Uh, and published our own books is what, we, what we've done. And mine, she just kept saying, you know, I tell everybody that I had this idea because what we would do, we would have kids come in and see me and, and we were collecting these stories. I'd come in at night from the mall and she'd say, what happened today? She'd debrief me. Every night she's debriefing me and, and writing and down what, what had happened that day or I'd forget, you know. And so finally I was telling people if I go to write a book, and finally she said, either do it or quit talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I said. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, the greatest, you want to hear the best advice I ever got? I was working part-time in a bookstore, and it took me two and a half years to write the first manuscript. The night I finished it, I went into work. I'm stuck in the psychology section, and I'm crying. My girlfriend Margie said, what is wrong with you? And I said, I finished the book today. And Margie said to me, okay, stupid, sell it and write another one. <laughs> and I was like, that, I use that at writer's conventions. You know, it's yeah. the best advice anybody ever gave yeah. me. It never occurred to me to write another book. You know, yeah. and here we are so many books later. It's amazing. Well, when we come back, we're going to take a break, hit brief break here. And when we come back, we want to talk about the Heartland Writers Conference and about some of the other ways that we can might can inspire other writers and, and people who've got things going out there because that's part of what our show is you know everybody says they want to write a book or a lot of people and I think everybody wants to write a book at one time we say everybody's got a that's, book in them whether right. they do it or not you know and uh, encourage them to do that so you stay tuned and we'll be right back have much to give then. So when they showed up firing them mean looks around the place and staring us down on prices, well, I was angry. Didn't seem to bother my father though. He had me load another bushel of apples in their trunk. I learned later on that this family was in need. The greatest gift we give It's in our heart what we believe The way we live Caring for others. Pass it on. Our guests today are Bobby Smith and Harry Spiller. We're talking about their books and writing and what it does to get you involved in writing. And we realize that uh, a lot of you out there have probably got a book in you or you say you'd like to write a book. And as uh, we're going to talk about some of the ways to get that done, you've heard Bobby and, and Harry both talk about how they got started 
And uh, tell us a little bit about the Heartland Writers Conference. I think, Harry, you're the one that <coughs> kind of... Well, I'm the that. conference coordinator, if, if you can say I can coordinate, but it, that's the title it gave me. <laughs> but uh, the, the uh, Writers Conference is June 8th, 9th, and 10th. It's, it's going to be held in Sykeston. Uh, we've got about 26 workshops, uh, which includes uh, three New York uh, agents that will be there. Uh, we've got the executive editor from Writers Digest, uh, a number of other editors from some magazines, plus nine uh, published authors that will be giving um, workshops along with doing appointments. The agents do appointments, give people who have manuscripts or ideas a chance to give a pitch to them directly. Um, the, the conferences are a good thing for people to attend. Networking is important. You know, if you sit down and you write your manuscript and you say, well, I'm going to send this to New York, uh, you know, to see if somebody will read it, you're looking at a slush pile. Yeah, we right. understand, and, uh, we understand we that, that fully. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, it, it's very difficult. And the same thing with an agent. It, coming to these conferences, you get to face to face with these people. And we have a motel there that we take the whole motel for the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's not that you just got to be, it, it, it's not like it's a, a big official thing. You can go to the workshops and you can do your pitch, pitch sessions. But we sit around the motel and, and uh, you know, the agents will sit and talk with people. You have plenty of chances to talk to these people and pitch ideas. And, you know, once you do that, even if you don't have a manuscript right there and ready, uh, a lot of times you've made a contact. And you've got somebody that you can get on the phone and say, hey, look, I got this. Uh, that's how I uh, was able to get an agent. I eventually got an agent going to the, the, to the conferences, but I know of several editors in, in places that they know me personally. I don't have anything that I'm writing for them at the present time, but if I came up with something, I could call them on the phone and just get them and say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. And that's important whenever it, whenever you, know, you start it, trying it to It really write. is. We went to BEA uh, uh, in LA three years ago, I guess, four, anyway, where it was. And I went to one of the meetings out there, one of the conference meetings out there. Now, when we, I w I'm in my Santa suit in cool. the middle of June, okay? You <laughs> stood out in the crowd. Yeah. So <laughs> right. I, I'm in the back, and this real nice looking young man comes up to me and he says, Santa, I want to thank you for being nice to me all through the years, et cetera, et cetera, oh, et cetera. How cute. And then uh, he gave me his card, and I looked at it and gave him Michael. We swapped cards. And then I sat down, and the, and the conference starts, and there's a panel discussion, and they're, they're all related. To the industry in some way and he's a producer for fox and friends up on the stage awesome <laughs> so after somewhere i said i said well uh, you're going to have a place for me to come to new york he said yeah i said when you come call me and so as a result of that well actually i got on fox and friends as a result of that and was uh montel williams just sent first christmas show as a result of that conference How just cool. that one meeting that networking yeah, yes that, that networking. networking sure and, uh, it so is it's very important very yes, important well, most yeah. definitely but, but you know a lot of people don't realize it, that's where they miss out. Well, know. it's because I think writers are basically shy. Yeah. I mean, we're so into the people talking to us in our heads that a lot of authors don't want to do autograph parties. They don't want to go out and meet the public. They just want to sit there and type. Yeah. And so it's it's hard. That's why the business degree helped me, and Harry's background has helped him. I mean, he's a people person. I'm a people person. I love being out in, with other writers, and, and that's why this conference is such a blast, because the whole thing like is uh, filled conference. with weird people like yeah, us, yeah. so yeah. we all well, have a yeah. good time. We'll fit right in. Yeah. That's right. T talking about your, your business degree and everything, I, I was, my wife and I both graduates of Belmont University in Nashville, and we were excited that when they decided, they offer a music business degree. Finally, yeah. Not a music degree, but a music business degree. At, when they started theirs, they were only one of two universities in the United States that offered that degree. But what better place to offer a music Nash business Nashville, degree yes. than Nashville, Tennessee? And, and uh, several of the, of the top singers actually went through the business program, mm -hmm. Faith Hill for one. Oh, it helps you understand what's going on. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, and uh, so it's, it's important that you have other types of, of interest and in, in learning also. You know, you were talking about how you did in school in English. Mm -hmm. Well, I taught English for one year in high school. <laughs> the problem was they put me teaching sociology and economics, too, and I never had economics in my life. So <laughs> that was not very good. <laughs> but anyway, I had this young man that had to write a theme one day, and he wrote uh, that he, would, he didn't know why you had to take English, that you would never use English. <laughs> <laughs> I said, only every day, you know. How cute is that? That is awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> wonderful. Kids say the darnest things. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are wonderful. Well, now you also write as Julie Marshall. Right. I did. I, I am doing faith-based contemporaries. And because they're so different from my westerns and my other historicals, New York wanted me to come up with another pseudonym just to give the readers a heads up that this is not the usual western coming out of Bobby. So that's why I used the Julie Marshall name as a subtitle mm -hmm. underneath, a uh, subname under Bobby Smith. Now that is, I read, <coughs> excuse me, I read one of yours. Haven? You read the first one, yes, Haven? Yes, yes. That was excellent. Oh, thank I, you. As I said, I cried a lot. Oh, good. That, ma that makes well, it a I good like to, book if you not cry. because it was badly written, though. Okay, good. Thank <laughs> no, you, no, no. <laughs> that's what they, uh, we, we get comments on her first book, and uh, that's what they'll say. I had to read it with a box of Kleenex, or I, I cried halfway through it, because hers is 40 um, stories, inspirational stories of true life stories, things that have happened to people, you know, and they'll say, yeah, read it with, with clinics in hand, you know, and, uh, but, so I guess that's good. It is good. Yeah. With yeah, miracles. Um, I was remembered, do you remember the old TV show, The Millionaire? Yeah. John yeah. Bears for oh, tipping, yes. giving away his money? Yeah. And so I have one of my main characters, there's like four storylines in Miracles too, but this elderly man with no family discovers he's got six months to live, and he's got a lot of cash, so he starts secretly giving it away to help people. So I never knew what story arcs were. You know, in English class, they taught you about story arcs and, you know, through the story. I don't, you know, I've just been writing novels and I didn't think about it. But somebody told me when they read Miracles, oh, all the story arcs you had in there. And I went, <laughs> yes, Ms. Enright would be proud of me from back in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting, again, how the terminology in education changes, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I mean, some of the terms they use today, I have no earthly idea what they're talking about. But I'm sure it's the same thing that we were taught back Just, when I was in school. What ever happened to dangling participles and all that good stuff? You don't you ever know? hear that anymore, do you? No. I don't mm. think they even diagram anymore, do they? I don't I don't know. think my grandsons have. Really? Uh, it's, 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 but it's interesting. Imagine that. The huh? humiliation at the blackboard. Mm. Oh, that was horrible back in the old days. <laughs> They don't and have blackboards anymore either. <laughs> and those of you watching the show know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a, now this conference is June 8, 9, and 10. Yes. Is that Sixth. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Yeah, well, it's actually Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We, we meet on Thursday night, and we open up with a, what we call an icebreaker, and that's for all the agents and editors and all the people attending to just mingle and get to know each other so that everybody isn't running around afraid to talk to somebody. Right. Well, and, and that's on, good. Yeah, no. yeah, it is. It's because a lot of them, you know, people will come, they've never been, they feel intimidated. Right. And we don't want that. I mean, we, we want them to uh, feel that they can, you know, talk freely. That's why they're coming to the conference. And then we start with our workshops on Friday and we go uh, from about uh, nine to four with workshops and uh, we have a, a lunch break and then we have a uh, author signing. We have an open mic session uh, on Friday night to where people can read. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then we do the same thing, workshops all day Saturday. And we have a banquet on Saturday night. We went to uh, St. Petersburg. I was just fixing something. I'm gonna let you tell the story. Okay. Uh, to the Florida Saint, or uh, Russia? Florida. Okay. The St. Petersburg. Uh, <laughs> Writers Festival conference. Oh, awesome. It's, it's the book fair for the newspaper. Gotcha. Yeah. Petersburg Times. And uh, so you t tell what happened to you. <laughs> we, we had a dinner like you were talking about. I mean, this was out in South Florida, out by the pool. Really, really nice. Lovely buffet dinner. So everybody could meet everybody. And I was going around mixing and mingling and talking. And this lady says, oh, she says, I just enjoyed your book so much. And then you feel so wonderful, you know. Right. <laughs> and uh, she said, your daughter's writing with you now, isn't she? I said, no, ma'am. I said, who do you think I am? Mary Higgins Clark. Clark. Oh. See, Mary Higgins, she was there, she and her daughter, they were both there. Awesome. But she, she thought she was there. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Nice <laughs> yeah, congratulations. That's neat. The next day, the people are lined up all around the building to get in to see her. Of course, here <laughs> we are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was, oh my gosh. I know, I, I sat I next know. to one of the vampire writers, you know, and she had a line for the entire three hours of our signing yeah. at the Romantic Times, yeah. and I you know, had a few people occasionally come by. Uh, did you want to tell them how to contact Heartland Writers? Yes. Uh, well, you can, uh, the brochures are in a lot of the bookstores around the area and so forth. In but Paducah? you can go well, In uh, Paducah, in Missouri, and Illinois, but you can get on the Heartland Writers, go to heartlandwriters.org. Okay. And if you go on our website, you can get all the information, who the speakers are, what the costs are, how to get there. Uh, and there's an application online that, that, that you oh, can okay, get, good. and you can download it and, and send that in. Okay. And uh, 
I think it would be beneficial to those people who, who are interested. And one of the things that I'd like to say in, in what we're talking, and I know you all know this, but you can't expect everybody else to get your stuff. You've got to constantly yes. be working at this. I found, you know, it's not just enough to publish it and have an agent and hope they sell the books. You've got to constantly be making effort to try to promote your stuff that's and right. stay oh. out there. And that's how I ended up on Forensics Files. Okay. I was sitting in my office one day and I was thinking about this and I thought, you know, they are, they're, they're showing these shows the same thing I'm writing. So I got on the internet, I found Forensics Files, I found they had an email address, and I just emailed them. Told them who it was and what I had, would you like to take a look? And they sent back and said, we'd love to. Well, I didn't, I, it was exciting, but I figured, you know, this is probably one of a million books they get. And within two months, they were coming down to film one of my stories. Wow. They're looking at another one, and I got on the History Channel the same way. Well, that's, I tell people that every inch of a newspaper or magazine has to be filled, uh -huh. and every minute, of a TV station has to be filled with something. So even though it's hard to get on sometimes, they're looking to have mm -hmm. people on and, and articles in their paper. And so, so all of this is taking place. Uh, it's like uh, we're about to run out of time, but I'll tell one other story. We're having our first National Santa Claus Convention in Branson in July. Oh, how they'll, fun. There'll be over 300 natural bearded Santas there. Too cool. And so when they started putting it up, I belonged to the organization. They asked for workshop people. So I just filled out a thing for me and one for her. So we're both doing workshops there, and I'm doing a keynote farm, you know. But it's like you awesome. say, you have to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do. And some you people do. can't do that, but you got to do it. You got, yeah. You have to. You got to do it. Unless Oprah picks you up and holds you up, and then you're there. Yeah. <laughs> Unless yeah. you made up something that you weren't supposed to make up and put it as nonfiction. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's another, that's yeah, that's another, another story. That's another whole. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Boy, that is. Uh, <laughs> Well, listen, we appreciate having y'all with us oh, today. Thank you it's so been much. exciting. We'll have to do it again. Uh, and I know, I'm sure that we'll go plan on going to the, to the conference because we're excited about that. Oh, and that'd be great. Be oh, that'd be great. But uh, it, it's always interesting to see things that are happening and people that are doing things. And that's the reason we do our show. We want to encourage you to watch our show every week. We're going to have exciting people and stories and information and things to inspire you. And so we want to encourage you to be back here next week for our next show. And remember, use it or lose it. Janetta, give them our address. P.O. Box 7, Bose, Kentucky, 42027. Can't see as well as I used to. Can't run as far or as fast. Sometimes I think that the old me is becoming exactly that. 